Our life is composed greatly from our dreams, but they must be brought into connection with action. They must be woven together. Everybody has ideas. I hear so many great ideas, but the key to an idea is action and execution. I'm Che Pope. I'm an executive, I'm a producer, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a composer. You may know me from my affiliation with Kanye West and Good Music. You may know me from Dr. Dre and Aftermath. You may know me from working with The Weeknd, ASAP Rocky, 2 Chains, French Montana, Ty Dollar. You just may know me, or you may not. Welcome to my crazy little world. I call it Frog Town Workshop, because the area used to be called Frog Town. The idea behind this space in this room is just kind of like back when, you know, you're just sitting around and, you know, it's, it's almost like a living room environment versus more so sort of a studio environment where you can just create, you know, with ease. This particular setup right here is kind of like what I would have if I was in a hotel room or if I'm traveling. I would have like a small controller, you know, maybe a beat machine and a laptop. This is tend to be how I start all ideas. I do some sound design when I start a track too. So I may spend the first 10 minutes literally just designing some sounds because that gives me a unique palette to paint from. It's like a painter mixing their paints. And so they're starting off from a place where they have these 10 amazing paints to start with. Right now I'm doing what the young kids do on like on FL where they mouse click a beat. But normally I would program a beat because I'm still from the MPC era, but I'll mouse click it today for shits and giggles. So I just did a little beat, a little drum beat, and then I'm gonna pull up analog brass wind and strings that I love so much. And I do love the sound that I found. This is actually one of your presets in um, output. I'm notorious for not using, ever using presets in VSDs or anything. Only reason is I don't ever want people to be able to like, oh, that's that preset. But in this case, I love the sound. So I've, I've actually used the sound a few times. So this is straight from uh, the output brass collection. I love it because it's, it's got this dirt air thing going on that happens. And that's like, a lot of times I make sounds to do stuff like that. And you already have that. Sounds like some Radiohead shit to me, but it's cool. I love it. So now the beat needs to, needs to be a completely different thing than it started with. So I'll filter the drums down. I put kind of a crazy filter on them, as a, a filter delay effect on them too, just to give me a, a little more vibe. But once I have a groove going, from there I'll start orchestrating the vibe. So I'll start adding, first I might add some, and right now, since I don't have a vocal and I don't have a top line going, I'll just add my version of it with piano. So whether I keep this line that I put in right now, it, it gives me a sense of, of what we might do melodically. And I think once I, see for me, once I kind of have an idea of what a vocal could do, then I could figure out like, well, okay, what can I do to like leave space for the vocal? I started out like most kids, you know, kind of just hanging out in music stores and playing whatever they would let me touch until they kicked me out. And at that time, it was still more like home setups for like four tracks and things of that nature. First thing I wanted to show you in my crazy world is my Rhodes. So this was a teaching Rhodes, which was great about this is it has a metronome built in and a speaker. And then I had a friend of mine from Singapore who's a graffiti artist and an MC. So she painted it and then she put my favorite verses on. So this is Biggie's verse from Unbelievable, live from Bedford Stuyvesant, and the live is one representing BK to the fullest. Shouldn't just stay inside the box. The box is great, and the laptops are great, and VSDs are great, but it's also coming outside and experimenting with some of this stuff. These are very dear to my heart. This is a Krumar, which is um, late 60s, and this is the Russian version of the Krumar. What's amazing about this, and even though they're copying this keyboard, it sounds completely different. Anytime I turn this on, people always want me to use this on a record. I want to battle any producer who thinks he's nice with an Omnichord. I actually want to know the producer who has an Omnichord. I gotta be the only guy in the urban world with an Omnichord, and I'm nice with it. Work ethic is important to me. If I see someone talented, then I try to just help them, because people did that for me when I came up. I love spending time with these guys, like Dahi to Blood Pop to, you know, Murder Beats, you know, Metro Boomin. I consider them friends, you know what I mean? Not even just, you know, like whether I mentored them or gave them advice or gave them studio time or put them on a record or, or set their beats to, you know, such and such. It's just a part of the process of, you know, I want to see everybody win. True 
great, amazing musicians can write in whole song phrases, I tend to write as modern producers do in segments. So this might be my overall groove, what may end up becoming my verse, you know? Or if I orchestrated more, it could be my chorus. But now I'd be like, okay, what's, what's my release doing? What's my pre-chorus doing? You know, so I would do something like... You know, and start getting an idea of a change. When I get to the chorus, I want it to just go crazy. And I'll do some sort of... Of course, and that's just, I don't know that I'll keep that beat, but that's what the beat I have for now. And that's my five minute beat. I use a lot of pedals. My favorites are this company called Death by Audio, which I have every pedal they make. I run everything through pedals. I run keyboards, I run guitars, obviously I run basses. You know, I run all different synths. I run drum machines through pedals. It's that sonic exploration of just finding the magic. I have a pretty eclectic collection of guitars, meaning from electric to even a sitar. I have mandolins and all sorts of things. I have a bazooki. This is the Che Vicious guitar. All the Che stickers. This is the OG. Over here, I'm showing my age. This is my 24 track, two inch Sony MTR. When I started, there were tape machines. So it's very important for me to have one in my studio because I just still love the sound and the warmth of the tape. This is what I call my quote wall. And every time I hear something throughout the day or throughout my travels, I commit it to the quote wall if it's something that resonates with me. Kanye made my wall twice. Distraction is the enemy of vision. That got committed in a recent tweet. I love that one because part of this whole studio is about isolation and focus to really be prolific in my creative output. My presence is a present. That's basically all about your value. One thing I do know about the music industry, or any industry that matter, you, you don't get taken advantage, you let yourself be taken advantage of. So meaning if you empower yourself with the appropriate personnel around you, there's no way you can be taken advantage of unless you allow it. I was part of a big record. It's called The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. Well, it's also The Miseducation of Che Pope. It was a life lesson in terms of knowing your value. I think all artists should look at themselves. There's the creative side of their thing, but they should also be such and such artists, Inc. You know, they all should be their own CEOs. It's one thing to be a creative, but it's another thing to be also be, mo you know, to monetize your art and be compensated accordingly for your art. Every time I meet artists, I talk about it. I talk about ownership, I talk about empowering yourself and sort of taking back your creative control, if you will. The future of the music business is literally that artist owning their art, you know, meaning owning their master or owning a percentage of their master, partnering with resources versus signing to a company and being contractually bound to a company, meaning they have freedom, they have artistic freedom and control of it. You don't sign for six albums, you sign for an album, you sign for a song. I've always just tried to also be a great connector. So for instance, you know, Kanye we wanted to do the sneaker thing. You know, I connected him with the CEO, the head worldwide CEO of Adidas. You know, we brought him to a couple of Watch the Throne concerts. And now you have Yeezy, which is, you know, a tremendous brand that's doing amazing all around the world. So and that was just a matter of being a connector. I like the way Virgil and Kanye have approached their careers as as creatives. Not necessarily like, oh, I'm not a clothing designer or a furniture designer or a DJ, you know, whatever the case may be. They're creatives. And I consider myself a creative, but I also consider myself a creative business person. Just what everybody needs for security, a hyena. So when I got the space, Rick Rubin came to mind. And I was thinking about Rick Rubin with the wild boar when he had the haunted house, the haunted mansion studio. And I was like, okay, how can I compete with Rick Rubin? I know, a hyena. So this is Nino, and he protects the studio. I don't have many pictures in my studio. This one is one of the few that I have, and it's very special to me because it was um, a night in the studio working with Dre and working with the RZA from Wu-Tang and Ray Kwan from Wu-Tang. And although we worked and we did music, we really talked about life. So it was a really special evening. So I, I treasure this picture. What's next is world domination. And I don't mean world domination in like, you know, in a literal sense, but I mean, it, well, I guess I do. I, I, you know, I got it from you know Austin Powers, you know, Dr. Evil. It's a big world out there. I think 
people have to let down their guard and travel and get on a plane, go see places and experience things, taste the food, taste the culture, feel the air. It's all an energy and it's all a wave and it's all a vibe. So what's next is really approaching what I do in a, in a global way. New Orleans, Asia, Africa, and sharing music and experiences. You can't have fear of flying. You just gotta take the step and just put the music out there and let people, you know, critique it, give you feedback, build a fan base in some cases, and you'll get to where you're trying to get to. So you might hear this record somewhere. Cause I, 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 like, I like where it's going.